afternoon, everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well, enjoying their Saturday. So I, w I mentioned yesterday I was going to put up a tropical outlook. And, well, just when I was saying at one point that tropics are kind of remaining quiet here, this happens. Got Invest 91L over here towards the Gulf of Mexico. This has a 50% chance of developing within the next 48 hours and a 70% chance of developing within the next seven days. This is a, our first invest in a while, actually. We did have one that popped up over here, but really had no chance. The environment's a little bit better over the next couple of days over the Gulf, so this has a fair shot. Still don't know what to make of it, considering the fact that we've had areas as high as 60 to 70% before and nothing came of it, so... A little skeptical still, but I'm keeping an eye on it. I do think the environment is pretty well set, though, so not out the question for sure. We have a couple other areas we're going to have to watch here. You can see everything on the uh, satellite feed in the bottom left corner, but this second disturbance area has a 40% chance of developing within the next week, and then this other area over here has a 20% chance of developing. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the weather models and the environment out ahead of it over the course of the next 16 days. And we also have to remember that Eastern Pacific has its own hurricane season as well ongoing. And there is an area that I'm watching really closely that could maybe impact the Baja in California possibly. So we're gonna go over this area too. This does remind me a little bit of what Hillary was like. Anyone that was here last year, we actually did end up covering Hurricane Hillary on stream. And this could be not exactly a similar example, but maybe something similar could occur here. But that being said, let's go ahead and start out with the Atlantic. This is what we're dealing with right now. Here is Invest 91L, and then here's that other low pressure that's starting to flare up at this point. So if we continue to run this, this is over the next 10 days. <clears throat> There is an ensemble run that even shows something popping up here along with this other low feature in the Gulf. And the interesting thing to make note of here is this doesn't push west towards Mexico. It pushes up to the north. So if you're on the part on the coast of Texas here, maybe even towards Louisiana, you might have to keep an eye on this over the course of the next 10 days. I really think by the middle or end of the week is when we'll see where this ends up going exactly. And then, of course, beyond that point, we still, are, of course, are watching that main development region. And for the most part, I would expect any storms that develop here to end up making a northward turn and stay away from land for the most part here. So I'm not super concerned with anything that pops up here as of right now. Of course, we know things love to change when it comes to the weather. We've been seeing it all year with the tropics. <laughs> but that being said, we'll just be keeping an eye on this point for this region here. Still not going to quite rule out the East Coast yet, but based off of what the trends are, I think we're going to see any feature that develops here turning northward, not even getting close to Bermuda at this point. At least that's my call right now. That being said, looking at the wind shear, this has been a big inhibiting factor throughout the year, along with, of course, the Saharan dust, which we'll look at in a second. You can see right here that over towards the Gulf, right where 91L is, Wind shear is relatively light. This is exactly what you would want for an area of interest over here. And it's going to pretty much continue to be that way. Also make note that over towards the main development region out to the east, pretty much a similar deal. Wind shear is going to be light. And this is exactly what you would want once more. And for the most part, the trend kind of remains. Especially as we look towards the main development region, wind shear doesn't really start to ramp back up towards until like maybe the end of the month. And even then, it's still pretty light. So... We get quite a few name storms if they can get their act together. The biggest factor by far this year, however, has been the Saharan dust. Saharan dust has been pretty much reigning supreme over the region here, but we're finally starting to see a little bit of a breakthrough here. And as a result, we're starting to see some potential for name storms to pop up. This one right here, based off the operational model, actually looks like it becomes a pretty powerful hurricane at 960 millibars of pressure. That's a, potentially even a major hurricane at that. And it continues to strengthen for a while. And we do get a time frame here over this region in general where the Saharan dust really kind of tapers off here. 
and the same thing and of course the gulf of mexico is pretty moist so no no real issues or concerns there in regards to an inhibition there but it's always been the main development region this year we just couldn't really get anything to kind of pop off in the gulf here but as time goes on here we do end up getting that Saharan dust to come back into the equation here but even then it's not quite as significant as we've seen this of course is at the end of the 16 day period so something to still keep an eye on but I don't know exactly what this will bring in total as far as name storms we I do think we still could see a couple before the month ends but I don't expect it to be the seasonal uh, like active September hurricane season like what we were expecting I do think we could still see maybe an average number of hurricanes possibly before the year is out but right now we're looking a little funny on that but that being said let's go over to the eastern pacific and this is that feature that we're watching over there just off of uh, the mexican west coast here and notice these models are kind of pushing it right towards the baja here and towards the end of that 10 day period we get very close to california i'm going to be watching that extremely closely over the next few days i'm trying to come up with a new term in regards to what kind of mode the channel will be in if there's active weather such as what we're seeing here possibly maybe this will be like phase one or something if you guys have any names or recommendations uh, definitely let me know in the comments but in any case though i do think that a little bit later in the week instead of going the normal seven days i'll probably make a follow-up tropical update to go along with this but that being said though you can clearly see that there is very good reason to keep an eye on this if you're in Southern California right now. Nothing to necessarily be scared of or evacuate for just yet, but definitely something to pay attention to over here. And we don't really talk about the Pacific much, so we're going to be a little bit more comprehensive here. So, of course, we're going to look at the typical stuff, the wind shear over here towards this region. The environment's relatively kind of, in the, I would say more so in the middle there is some wind shear, both to the north and to the south. And the further north we get, the wind shear is more hostile. But as time goes on, as we look at the model run here, wind shear does lighten up, especially after that 10-day period, at least towards the middle part of the region. So depending on how long this takes to develop, it could flourish pretty well. But GFS isn't also really showing much of anything taking off at this point, once that wind shear does lighten up. So kind of questionable as to whether this does or doesn't form and it's ironic that over towards the Atlantic the issue has been Saharan dust it's not Saharan dust that we're dealing with here it's just dry air in general so over towards this region we have plenty of moisture but as time goes on you start to see that increase in dry air which is going to help inhibit any sort of development it's not going to completely take the chance of development away, but it's going to definitely slow down any chance of it occurring. So that being said, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of calling this one a toss up here as to whether this forms. I'm, right now, I'm kind of, kind of leaning a little bit more towards no, but like I said, I'm uncertain right now. But let's just say I have a slight bias towards it not developing, I guess you would say. In any case, though, we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at the waters over the eastern Pacific here. And the thing to make note of is it's actually very warm over here, too. So if we can somehow overcome the, the wind shear and some of the dry air that's going to be in play here, this could be big still. I remember last year we had Hurricane Otis hit Mexico as a Category 5, strengthening faster than anything I've ever seen before. And it just left everybody in the weather community stunned. I don't expect that the situation like that to occur. But these waters right here are definitely a red flag at the very least. It's still, like I said, the question really will lie with the track and the temperatures over towards this region. It's not exceptionally warm. So if something does develop, I don't expect it to last long. But if it organizes itself well enough over this region it could make its way into the Baja and into California even. So that being said, just more stuff to keep an eye on here and we'll just kind of run on from that point. That being said, you guys have an awesome rest of your Saturday. 
hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button if you did and also hit that subscribe button if you are new and then I, with that being said also i will see you next time